Hey, David, what's up, dude? I'm good. How are you? All right, brother. Things going okay? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking my call. You got it. What's up? Um, so I've been struggling with something for a little bit. I'm um, trying to figure it out. And I've just been thinking about it a lot. And I was like, asking myself, I was like, well, what would Dr. John say? And I was like, well, <laughs> that's a scary I just, place to start, I just homie. Him, you know? Yeah. I like it. All right. So, so I was like, how would he approach the situation? So I figured I would just call on and see if you'd be able to help me. I'm sure you would. I love it. Let's do it. All right. So I've been trying to, I've been struggling a little bit with trying to figure out how to put aside my negative experiences and feelings towards religion um, and try to figure out how to navigate my own beliefs and what I believe to be true and how to like implement that into my life while trying to put aside all these negative um, like experiences that I've had that kind of, you know, block out the being able to figure out what I really want for myself. What's your, what's your faith tradition? Uh, I'm Jewish. Okay. And what are these yeah. negative experiences that you want to disconnect from? You want to cut off from? So, I mean, there's a, I mean, there's a lot of like, you know, small things I could, you know, figure out, but like, I feel like the main thing for me, it's like, I grew up in a very religious household and you like know, a, pr- a practicing Jewish family. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you know, my parents are great and everything, but I went to a lot of, you know, ever since I was a kid, went to a lot of very religious schools and mm-hmm. high schools were really intense, you know, and I'm sure you've, there, there are all different religions that have these kind of schools, but just for me specifically, they're really strict and really intense and just, and I don't think it was any like single, like little thing that really bothered me, but I've had just a lot of like, you know, when, when trying to figure yourself out and like trying to like, what do I believe is true? Just kind of getting shut down over and over and over. And like, you know, you can't, meaning you can't really feel those kind of ways. And, you know, and so I'm not so observant anymore, but like, you know, and I would like for the longest time, I was just like, you know, I just kind of want to be done with this when I can and like not have to deal with it. But at the same time, like, figuring out what's really true and what I really believe is important is, is important. Well, and if you come from a strong practicing family, some of these choices you make are going to cost you things, right? Um, yeah, to an extent. Yeah. All right. So I, I'll say this, um, and then I've got it, um, an idea if, if you're cool with it. Um, number one, you're 18, right? Is that right? You're 18. Yeah. Okay. You are right to question everything. Yeah. I think that's right. I think that's good. And anybody that tells an 18-year-old not to question things and to shut their mouth and sit down and just digest whatever I'm giving you, you should be wary of that person because I'm a person of faith. I'm a person of practicing faith. But if I believe what I believe is true, then it's anchored into reality. That means you can question anything. You can run up against it. And if what I believe is true, it should hold, right? So I shouldn't be scared of anything anybody asks. And... At 18, I never want you to lose sight that the people around you who are older than you, who are doing things and it doesn't always make sense, that doesn't mean that you've somehow figured out a glitch in the matrix and they're suddenly stupid, right? Right. Right. So it's like, how do I ask these hard questions and how do I balance wisdom and respect and and knowing I don't know everything that's going on here? You get get that tension? That's tough for an 18-year-old, right? Yeah. Um. If you would be cool that I have a great friend, his name is Jordan Syatt. And do you know who that is? I don't. Okay. He's a super, he's one of the most amazing um, health and fitness and nutrition voices on the planet. Um, He makes me die laughing. Um, And he's also really thoughtful. He's a Jewish man and he's really thoughtful on navigating both sides of this conversation. Okay. Would it, you be cool if I brought him on and let him join us like in a, in this conversation? Yeah, sure. I think he would be a wise, he's fun, irreverent, but he also is very, very wise, very smart. Is that yeah. cool? Sure. All right. Hang on for a second. I'm going to bring him on. Okay. Jordan, you there? I'm here. Let's, I'm here. Thanks for having me. You got it, man. All right. David, are you there? Yes. All right, David, meet Jordan. Jordan, meet David. David, it's very nice to meet you. David. Very nice to meet you. And just for the record, David, if there was a fist fight, you would definitely defeat Jordan. 
Okay. Jordan is not very tough or strong. He has a great dad, though. He's a great dad. It's accurate. Just kidding. He's like one of the strongest um, guys who's ever lived. Yeah. All right, David, Jordan. The first thing I want to. Yeah, go, I, yeah I, I'm assuming you have no. <laughs> well, I was going to be smart, Alec, but we, we're short on time. Like, <laughs> tell me if this rings true to you, being 18 and being raised in this tradition and then going, I don't know what I believe. I don't know how. Like, talk to what you just heard with David. Yeah, I mean, a hundred percent, it rings true. The first thing that I want to say is, I mean, for anybody, never mind age, but especially to be eighteen and being like, "Hey, here's what I'm thinking, here's what I'm feeling. I want to separate my emotions from my beliefs." And to articulate what you just articulated so well is something that I, I'm I'm 33, so I'm I'm still very young. But there, are, these are things that 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70 year olds struggle to do. So for you to be having this conversation and seeking out help is just absolutely wonderful. And I, I want you to, uh, to recognize that because this is a lot of people attribute wisdom to age, which obviously age can, uh, with years that can come, but your mindset towards wanting to learn and find the truth is very unique and special. And I want to appreciate that within you. So that's number one. Um, Thank you. number, number two is Regardless, of, no matter where we are in the world in terms of whether it's religion, Judaism, Christianity, whatever, whether it's uh, lawyers, doctors, personal trainers, there are people in every industry, in every realm of life that are good at what they do and are not good at what they do. There are people who are very dogmatic and people who are very open minded. And it sounds like you've been surrounded by or you've seen in many instances people in Judaism who have been very dogmatic. And they, it sounds like they've been right. saying, this is what you believe and this is it. And, and that's it. Now I'm sure, you know, and any Jewish person will know that you put the old joke is you put three Jewish people in a room, you're going to have four different opinions. Right. And, and yeah. even part of Judaism is, is debate, right? We talk about on Passover, how you stay up all yeah. night and you debate, you debate the Torah, you debate the Bible. Yeah. It's, the the whole concept that there's only one right way about it is that's inherently flawed and goes against everything about Judaism. And yeah. so for and you to be questioning it is the most Jewish thing you could do. Yeah. And, and I mean, I had like a kind of second part to the question, cause that's, that's kind of something that I've like talked to my dad about. He's super awesome, super smart. And he's, you know, that's, that's kind of like where it all like comes from is like, you know, if everybody that I knew was just crazy and like, you know, everybody, like, I'd be like, well, what is like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, I don't want to be part of it, but there are so many people that I know my dad being one of them. So many people that like, they're super smart, super thought out. Like, you know, it, it can't be that everyone's crazy. And I know a lot of people that aren't. So the second part of my kind of question was, you know, I, like when I was younger, it was kind of hard to separate, like, you know, just figure out what's going on. Cause I just couldn't tell. And there were so many people saying different things, but now that I'm older, I'm kind of like realizing like, yeah, like what you just said is like, there's so many people that are just like, you know, they're misrepresenting what is really true. And like, I'm now realizing that. But the second part of my question was kind of like, you know, as you kind of figure out what you believe to be true and like, let's say, I, you know, I'm like, you know, this is what I believe. This is true. Another, another part of the equation for me is like, but still like, I, like, I don't think it's healthy for me because I've tried and like to ignore those experiences and feelings that I don't know if you'd call trauma, but like, uh, that's the only word that I could think of that would kind of make sense in this context is like all those experiences and emotions, just like, even if I believe it to be true, how could I like possibly like be a part of that community and those people that made me feel that way? Cause you know, at the same time as like, you know, I believe that that is how that, that religion is true. Like to practice it and teach it to my kids and send my kids to these schools and like, you know, be a part of that community. Like, I don't know if I would ever be able to do that, even if I believed in what they were saying. And, and I think, and I'm, I think John will be able to give you uh, probably even better insight than I will. But what I'll say is, uh, you don't have to be a part of that part of the community and you should yeah, never amen. feel like you're required to. Um, there are many other areas of the community. I guarantee you there are other areas of, of the Jewish community, if you would like to be a part of it, 
that would completely disagree with what you've been through. And they would be horrified, I'm sure, at the things that you've, you've been put through. And so I don't want you to feel like that your experience thus far is the only experience. And it's definitely not the experience that you are required to continue with, nor that your, your God willing future children are required to deal with at all. And, uh, there's no reason at all for you to feel like you must stay in there, especially if you've gone through trauma at all. And David, here's, here's a, maybe a sideways analogy that works for me. Um, I've struggled with body dysmorphia stuff issues my whole life. Um, and I have gotten so much garbage and trash advice. Cascading is wisdom. Cascading is insider info when it comes to exercise and health and nutrition and just what a normal body is supposed to look like. And so I walked away from all of it. The problem is I still have to deal with there's truth, right? I still have to deal mm-hmm. with, I've got to take care of myself. I just didn't know how to do it. And so the mission for me, I think, I think um, you, you hear the term deconstructing all the time. I think asking questions is always so good, yeah. but I also want to hold, it's much easier just to burn a building down than to walk down the stairs and walk out and go find another place to walk into, right? That's a much harder th- thing to do. Yeah. And so what I had to do was seek out a few people that I trust. Jordan is one of those guys. Um, Adam and Justin and um, Sal at Mind Pump are one of those guys. Lane Norton's one of those guys. I trust them. And here's the deal. I can't cash out on this stuff. I, like you, have some, some experiences from my religious background that made me walk away from the whole thing. This is a functioning atheist for a while. I was so sick of the whole stupid thing. And over time, in my world, the, the truth didn't add up. So I had to go find people that I trusted. But as Jordan said... No, do not, I, I'll tell you, don't subject your kids to an abusive situation, period. I don't care what kind of dressing they wrap it up in, right. whether it's nutrition, whether it's um, physical abuse, whether it's religious intolerance, don't wrap yourself up in that. And if you also know people around you to be very wise and to be right, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Right. But it's okay to take a breath and to step back from it for a bit. Okay. Does that, does that ring true? Yeah, that sounds, that sounds like a good idea. Jordan, do you have any tangible things as you've, I mean, as you've navigated this your whole life, you spent time in Israel, you've spent time here. Um, um, do you have some tangible things for an 18 year old kid? Who's just like, all right, I, I'm, I don't want to be a part of the day to day nonsense that I had to deal with at the same time. There's gotta be some wisdom threaded through there. Yeah. So, I mean, <sighs> One thing, a practice that has worked very well for me, and this is not just with Judaism, but with anything is whenever I've been wrapped up in an extreme end of something, oftentimes in the extreme end, they'll tell you not to do certain things or even not to associate with other people. And I know that uh, in extreme ends of Judaism, for example, and other religions as well, but especially in like extreme ends of like, you don't, don't talk to reform. Like they're not really even Jewish or don't talk to conservatives. They're not really even Jewish or don't go to Hillel, you should only go to Chabad, whatever it is. Like, I would encourage you to go to, go to these other places, like go to Hillel, go to a a conservative synagogue, go to uh, interact with people who maybe are, have not been, are not in the most extreme end of it. And start asking Mm -hmm. questions, start communicating with them, go to a Shabbat dinner with them. Uh, I have a very strong feeling that you'll start to connect with them on a very deep level and you'll feel very seen and very heard and, and start to open up your mind to a, a community right. that you didn't even know existed within your community. Right. Is that worth, yeah. is, it, I, is that something to explore, David? Would you be willing to have the courage to do that? You're a courageous 18 yeah. year old already. Yeah. I mean, so la- like last part of the, the question is like that, that act, that sounds like awesome. And, and that's one of those things that just like, that, that I've, I know people personally that have done that and I, I know it's worked for them. I know people that it hasn't worked for, and I, I think it's a, a definitely a good path. But my last part of my question is that, um, a lot of the, I think something that kind of turned me off early on and something that's always been a lot, a little bit of like a question for me. And I know that like, it seems like a silly kind of thing to say, but to me, you know, if I'm told like, you know, you can't do this or you can't do that, meaning let's say the example is you can't go, you can't not be religious. You know, you have to be religious. And if you're not, then you're not as good as us or whatever it is. 
to me, it's like, well, why not? Like, why can't I? And the fact that it's always like, you can't do that. Or you like, if you do that, like I have a, a family member, a relative that ended up marrying somebody that was not a Jewish woman. And he basically got excommunicated. Like nobody talked to him for like 10 years. And to me, it's like, that's extreme. And like, whatever the reason may be, and whether it's important to you or not, is like, it's one of those things just like, when it feels like you have no choice, that's when I want to know why, why do I have no choice? And that's, so it, here's what I'll tell you as a, as a 18 year old, that's hard because there are things that we tell 17 year olds. You just can't buy lottery tickets, dude. You can't, because if you won $25 million, the statistics say you're going to end up in a dumpster. Hmm. And at 17, you're like, that's so stupid. Let me buy a lot. They're right there. Oh, like tomorrow when I turn 18, suddenly I can handle it. I get, there's some arbitrariness to it. Right. Or when you're 14 and you're like, I want to see that movie. And the psychologist of the world had said, hey, if that's in your head at 14, right. the chant is not – I get how frustrating and arbitrary and right. just but being – I feel like that's a logical – I feel like that's a logical, like, I have a reason why you shouldn't do that. But when it's like, I know what you need better than you, right? like, that, that's, the, that's the worst. Well, and you're 18 and the whole world's opening up for you now. And so your parents' job is to do the best they can to protect the one, the most precious thing in their world, and that's your soul and your mind. And most parents either go too far in either direction. They don't protect it enough or they way over protect it. It's a hard balance. I'm a dad. It's hard. Right. Okay. And here's what I'm training my 14-year-old to do. I never, ever, ever, ever get mad at my kids for asking why or saying, I don't think that's a wise move, dad. Right. Can you explain no, this? My, my, my parents are, are pretty good about that's that. That's awesome. And you also at 18 know, hey, that just sounds like bigotry. Right? You can already see it. <laughs> yeah. And so that means you, A, this is going to sound counterintuitive. That means you were raised right. That means yeah. your mom and dad had some real strong boundaries and they taught you to ask hard questions and to see things. Yeah. And two, now you're getting into 18, you're getting into adult world where you have to make decisions and there's going to be consequences on either side of these or 360 degrees around these decisions that you make. Right. Yeah. And, and you're starting at 18 to feel the weight of that squat rack, uh, squat bar, like, oh, I'm an adult. This is heavy. Yeah. And you realize, oh, my dad was carrying a lot around. That's maybe why he was so grumpy on Sundays. He was carrying the whole house all those years. Right. And so it's, it's a pressure that you feel. But yeah, if you see injustice and already can see it at 18, good on you, man. Good on you. Yeah. And I think, Jordan, you can back me up here, but. Your job will be if you see something like that, you see a family member who marries somebody and there's a group of your family that says, well, they didn't follow this thing to the letter. They're out. That you can then say, hey, you're always welcome in my home. Mm. You're always welcome at my table. Right. And that's how that's how change happens in these circles. Right. Jordan, any final words? I think that you just said it best. I completely agree. And David, I think you're doing the right thing. Asking questions. Don't ever feel like you can't ask questions. I think you're doing amazing. And, and uh, I know I'm proud of you. And I know John is too. So that's, you're doing fantastic. And David, I'm going to give you Jordan's personal cell number, his home address. And I'm just kidding. I'm, I won't do that. Um, but David, um, Jordan is pretty amazing. You connect with him, connect with him on Instagram. If you ever have additional questions and brother, never hesitate to reach out. Um, anybody. And this is specific to Jewish faith, but anybody asking questions, ask questions. It's okay. And if you are somebody that is terrified by the thought of asking questions, that is where you need to do your work. And it's okay to question everything and be really slow to throw out the baby with the bathwater. Be really slow because things can look shiny and flashy and modern and hip and cool. And the analogy I always like to use is we've just started knocking down grandma's old house because it was old and we put two tall and skinnies in the lot. And come to find out grandma's house was built 80 years ago with old wood lumber. And yes, it probably needed new plumbing and it needed a new roof, but that house was going to stay there for another 400 years. And we just knocked it down for two paper homes built with crappy, cheap pine. Right. I mean, don't just burn something to the ground because it it questioned it made you question things when you were younger and there's real trauma and real abuse across the board hope this served as a model for you because what did i ask david to do 
to talk to somebody who's got way more insight than I got in, into this particular situation. And I don't have all the answers here. So I call somebody like Jordan. I reach out to people for, for additional wisdom. Always reach out and ask people hard questions. Ask, ask, ask. David, I'm, you're, you're the, one of the wisest 18-year-olds I've met in a long time. I'm proud of you. Follow Jordan's suggestion. Go ask some hard questions. Go visit some people. Go have meals with people. Ask hard questions. Dig in. Always default to hospitality. And this world will change.